You reported the saying, Prime Minister, recommending, in fact, that black Africans in Rhodesia should constitute a Viet Cong. What did you mean by this? Well, you know, in the long run, nobody else is going to die for their freedom. And if what I've heard uh, them say is what they want, namely, you know, to use force and kill. The word kill has been used. And sanctions bite but do not kill, that's what they say. But I think that's quite right. And if, if you want to kill, then I think you've got to do your own killing. And it's a very messy and a nasty business. And uh, this is what the Viet Cong do. Uh, if you are not prepared to kill, and worse, be killed, uh, nobody else is going to fight and die for you. I mean, even the Russians and the Chinese, uh, despite all their protestations of communist brotherliness, uh, when they offer volunteers to North Vietnam, they always say, well, provided North Vietnam asks for it. And uh, by some coincidence, the North Vietnamese never ask for Russians and East Europeans or Chinese to die for them. They're dying for themselves. So how would you see this kind of um, guerrilla warfare being started up in Rhodesia? I think it's going to take a very long time, really. You know, you've got to have a people sufficiently gelled into one, believing passionately in their freedom and prepared to make the sacrifices. As long as you start, you're bleating and pleading and say, please, fight for me and kill uh, this lot of white fascists and give me my freedom, well, it's not, it's all very moving, but not very effective, really. The day they are able to throw up an organization or build an organization and throw up a leadership that's prepared to say, well, I am going to fight for my freedom, and who's there to give me a plastic bomb, a machine gun, a bazooka? I'll die, I'll pay for it. Then I think the world will set up and take note, as they have in South Vietnam.